hope everyone's having a good morning. Um, let me give a little background about our program. We, uh, we've been doing this program for several years now. I think a number of you calling in are probably quite familiar with it. There may be some um, past grantees dialing in. Um, we developed this program for the purpose of making uh, information on energy efficiency and water conservation more easily available to all our customers. Uh, specifically, we work with 501c3 nonprofit organizations, local ones, to provide energy efficiency information and assistance to customers that are more difficult for us to reach as a very large bureaucratic organization. Uh, some of the um, key aspects of this outreach we do is we, it, it may often include other languages. Um, Craig, uh, forgive me. That are, um, Folks who are more difficult to reach, we, that is definitely our target audience. Um, as nonprofit organizations, we really appreciate you work with a constituency on a range of issues important to people. People see you as trusted advisors, someone who's looking out for them and for the things they care about. Oh, you guys hear that. And sometimes people are more receptive to information when it comes from someone other than their electric or water utility. We have a certain way of uh, packaging and broadcasting our information and we realize you have other ways and um, other ways of connecting with people and we really appreciate that. Um, so there's me, many Craig, benefits to this partnership. Yep. The customers benefit. We understand they get a greater understanding of efficiency concepts for energy and water, so low cost or no cost, uh, things they can do to save energy and water. And um, there's benefits to, certainly for LIDWP. Every kilowatt hour gallon saved is one that we do not have to um, generate or provide. So that's a definite uh, benefit in terms of our long range planning for uh, energy and water supplies. Um, we can avoid that cost and avoid that effort and avoid the environmental impacts of that additional supply or generation. And it helps us meet our targets that we've um, committed to um, either locally or through uh, the state. Uh, energy, in, energy efficiency is an example. Um, we're trying to uh, have energy efficiency make up a 15% portion of our uh, supply portfolio um, by 2020. So this has been very important to us. Uh, for nonprofits, we hope that you also get, um, you know, benefit from this, this endeavor. So we um, hope that you build capacity and you learn more about these topics and you're able to continue this work on beyond the grants um, period, which we have. So that's just a little background. Um, let's talk about, I think, for those of you who are familiar with the program, we had a number of, um, a few things that are new this time, and I'll just highlight those briefly, and then we can move on to um, a general overview of the program. So this year, we have uh, two new categories, which is exciting. Uh, a one kind of uh, larger category of grants, what, which we had indicated in the announcement, and I'll definitely discuss in detail um, as we as we move on, is the underrepresented energy efficiency and water conservation program area grants. So, um, as you may know, the DWP Board of Commissioners have been looking at how DWP's infrastructure, services, and programs are distributed across the city and are tracking many of these activities through their equity metrics data initiative. This year we're offering a new grant category to really help us focus on this initiative. And this category is intended to address geographic areas of the city that are generally less able to access, access efficiency rebate and incentive programs and, and or have historically had lower rates of participation in these programs. In a little bit I will cover that more. If you would like to apply in this category, um, we'll take a look at the map and identify an appropriate size geographic area as you consider what activities you would conduct. Uh, the other category would be the Owens Valley area. Um, again, this is the first time uh, grant category intended to provide uh, energy efficiency and water conservation outreach and education to our customers in the Owens Valley. For this round, we have limited participation to 501c3 nonprofit organizations that are located in Inyo or Mono counties. Uh, we encourage partnering with tribal organizations in that area. Uh, we'll work closely with the grantee selected for that area 
to help that define key content and topics to cover. So uh, moving on to the, and I hope everyone is able to see this okay. If, if you're having any trouble viewing the webinar or hearing, um, there is a text function um, if, you, if my screen is not looking the way you think it should. Please, please shoot us a, a message. Uh, so we've gotten through the overview of the program. Now we're going to go briefly to our web page. Let me pull that up. This is on ladwp.com slash NP. So this page, let me organize things here. This page is where you get the information about our grant announcement. Uh, the key information is right here near the top. We uh, have outlined, we have posted the two key documents, both of which I'll be walking us through later in the webinar, announcement and application. Um, and the time, the time frame and the deadline and, the, of course, the details about this webinar uh, that we're doing right now. There's a little bit of the past information as well, if you want to familiarize yourselves with um, past awards. We have each round, the five rounds, uh, general rounds that occurred previously posted or listed here. The grantee awards are listed here. Um, just generally um, a list. We hope to expand this information at a later date to include more um, summary information about the projects. And then a little bit of information about some of the past programs offered for nonprofits and then resources as well for nonprofits and the contact, the email box. So this, any, any future announcements or current announcements uh, will be posted here. Um, let's go ahead and dive in to the um, announcement itself. So this, this has the key information you need to complete your application. We try to make the application as, um, as unburdensome as possible. We don't want to spend a lot of time um, just doing uh, sort of uh, paperwork and busy work trying to complete this application. We really ask the questions we need to know to make the evaluation. We don't have a lot of additional paperwork requirements um, for this. So the announcement itself gives you, you know, of course, and I think you've, most of you have probably viewed this already, a sense of the scope of the program, how many grants we're offering, or what dollar value. And we'll um, move right into the categories here and talk about them in a little bit detail, uh, more detail later. So we've always had uh, council district area grants. There are 15 at $45,000 each, totaling $675,000. Uh, that's been uh, common throughout, in common throughout our um, history of the program. So we have those again. Those focus on both. Uh, energy efficiency and water conservation. Uh, we like to have those be at least uh, half energy efficiency focused because of the, uh, the funding source for those grants. And we'll get into detail on, on that a little bit more later. We also have a category if, you're, if your area um, that you cannot reach to does not fit neatly with the council district, um, we offer, a, uh, I guess, four different uh, at-large grants this year. Each is also $45,000. Uh, one is more focused on energy. Two are more focused on water conservation. And if you have questions about uh, those, we will have someone available to help respond those, to those questions as towards the end of the webinar. And then we have that one new category, which I had discussed, the Owens Valley Area Grant. Uh, the next category is the other new category I had briefly discussed. So there's the five to eight grants I had mentioned totaling about 500,000 um, for the um, underrepresented program area grants. And then finally, in this category list, we have peer facilitator. This is a grantee which basically helps the other grantees um, do their outreach as effectively as they can and helps coordinate the grantees together um, in meetings or in other formats. Um, to, uh, again, kind of provide technical assistance and to try to improve the overall outreach of the grantees. Scrolling down, um, I won't 
I won't read all of this to you. Please, at your convenience, look through all the details of this announcement. Uh, eligibility criteria, uh, just quickly on a couple of the key points. Um, yes, again, you have to have a 501c3 status and maintain that continuously for the past three years while located in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, your location criterion can be accomplished through an IRS registration um, or a, the maintenance of a publicly available office in the city of LA. Uh, of course, the obvious exception to all of this is the Owens Valley Area Grant, which um, the organization should have a location in um, Inyo or Mono County. Uh, the other criteria um, I'll let you read through. Um, we have a few kind of key rules about the amount of your budget you can spend on certain activities. Um, one of which is a lot of organizations are interested in retrofitting their own facilities, uh, which we um, think is a great thing to do, but it's, this program is not really the vehicle for that. Uh, we can, I'd be happy, we'd be happy to connect you to other retrofit programs that are available. Um, so anything that's, that's like a retrofit or demonstration must not occur at your facility, rather at a publicly accessible uh, demonstration site of some sort, and that must be um, one-third or less of your proposed budget. Uh, same goes for research activities. Um, we, yeah, we appreciate all the benefits from the different kinds of research that can happen around these topics. Um, but in this case, only up to one-third of the project activities um, may be comprised of research, and um, that research must inform the other activities and the, the outreach and education that will occur. Deadline, of course, uh, just to emphasize it again, Wednesday, May 23rd by 3 p.m., uh, submit your application, uh, the PDF file, um, any, any supporting documents to nonprofit grants at LADWP.com. We encourage partnerships with the organizations. Um, uh, the lead applicant must be, meet those criteria, which we discussed. Um, and the lead applicant um, must have a primary role in, in the project. Evaluation criteria, I'll just briefly touch on these. Um, we have 100 points possible. Uh, we have an evaluation team uh, that is formed here. And we, um, according to, uh, we follow these point categories, responsiveness to the application requirements. Basically, are you following our instructions? So that can be a really easy 10 points if you just, just follow everything we say. Um, addressing local area needs. We, um, based on our past experience with the different geographic areas, um, we try to assess whether this meets the needs as we understand them. And we also check in with the uh, local elected office, the council office, um, and or the mayor's office. Past performance with behavior impacting programs. This does not have to be just about energy or water conservation. Just any program where you have, um, you know, hey, you have designed activities to impact behavior and you have been able to be successful in that. Cost effectiveness and viability of proposal. Uh, this is highly important. So you will. This is a competitive process, and the um, uh, amount of activities you are able to propose for the the dollar that you propose for um, will have a important um, you know impact on how you how you end up uh, scoring and ranking. Energy or water savings or other related benefits or proposal, certainly um, that's the heart, one of the heart areas of are you really hitting the points that we, we need you to hit for these grants. And then tracking and quantification for 10 points. We would like to understand the impacts that are being had. We have some assistance in that regard to help you track with some forms and some technical assistance from the peer facilitator. But we also want to see that um, description and that that thinking up front in your application. And then lastly, innovation. Um, if your idea is um, innovative, certainly we're happy to reward that. Scrolling down, we'll uh, go a little bit more through the categories. Um, council district grants, just to um, 
briefly clarify on the council district grants. Um, we do limit those to a single um, council district boundary. So in this category, you can't really apply across boundaries um, and then and then try to get one or the other. When you do, however, when you do apply, and we'll discuss this in the application, we do encourage you to offer your application up for consideration in as many council districts as possible. So you can say all 15 if you wanted to. Um, and so based on the award or awards that would be given, you would only serve the individual council districts and not necessarily an overlapping area. Uh, we can, I can touch on that a bit more later on. Uh, At-large grants, these are, um, you must outline the area that is provided. So um, if it's neighborhood names, uh, we need those to be, neighborhood names are helpful, but I think we also street boundaries, north, south, east, and west are even more helpful. So please give us enough information to work with on the geographic boundaries. Gonna move on. Uh, we're, we'll touch back on some of this um, as we get into the application form itself. I want to spend a little time on the um, the the underrepresented program area grants. So these grants, I would say, differ in a couple of ways from the other grants. Uh, you may be using the at large as the the point of comparison. Uh, we have uh, a geographic difference. So. The boundary areas are um, coincide with Cal EPA interactive maps, and I'll take you to that link right now just to show you the area of focus. Let me let's see how I do this. One moment, please. So, oops. Okay. So when you click on the link in the announcement, here's the map that you um, get. This is again a Cal EPA map uh, disadvantaged communities uh, pursuant to SB 535. So this shows the entire, entire, you can get the entire state of California, zooming in out of the but course, we of course are more interested in the city of Los Angeles. So zoom in and pan around to those areas, the areas in red are those designated, designated areas where we would like the, the outreach to be focused. I'm sorry, let me go back down here to LA. Um, be up here to LA Valley. There we go. Um, to be focused. So uh, again, outline your boundaries. Give us give us uh, streets where the extent you will go. Um, try to give us enough information to really understand um, which areas you will be focusing on for this purpose. So that's one aspect of how it is a little different from the uh, other grants. Another aspect is that it, it relates to our equity data metrics initiative. Uh, so if you click on that link, there are certain programs in the equity metrics data initiative. This is an initiative um, DWP, as we had mentioned, um, is very um, feels is very important, and so we um, are trying to further serve certain. Um, really all these areas, but under this outreach grant, these areas here, customer incentive programs and services. So anything in this category here um, is definitely something we would be interested in further serving. Um, and of course, any um, program that's like an assistance program, our, our, our rates programs, the low income discount program, um, those are also very much of interest in serving under this. So that's, uh, that is, that. so let me get back to the, um, the application. One moment, please. Applications here, I mean the announcement. So those are two key areas. Again, we're trying to uh, serve underserved folks. Um, with additional focus on this grant. So those focus areas are guided by the Cal EPA map and they're guided by our equity our highlighted programs under the EMDI. And a little more emphasis on the rate assistance programs uh, as well under this under this category. Peer facilitator, I think I discussed that 
uh, adequately uh, payment process. Uh, this is a reimbursement grant, so uh, there's a little there's and we do it on a milestone basis. So as once you receive an award, a MOU an MOU is set up with the scope of work, which lays out a milestone schedule and tasks to be completed to meet those milestones. Uh, upon completion of the first set of uh, tasks for the milestone, then the reimbursement is made. Uh, this is not a time and materials type of uh, grant payment. Um, all activities must be completed within one year, 12 months of MOU execution date. Uh, extensions will not be considered. It's very important to uh, kind of hit the ground running with your outreach activities and have a careful view of all of the uh, activities that you propose can be completed in one year. Um, looking at schedule, we expect um, to you know, complete the intake, obviously in May, of the grant applications. Selection, award, and the drafting and, and, and executing of MOUs probably takes us pretty much to July is when your activities will, will likely start. So just keep that in mind for your July, you know, and then going out 12 months for, from there. I'm going to close out of the announcements and get back and go over to the application. Both documents are right here. Here comes the application. One moment, please. Down a bit. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hope everyone can see that okay. All right. So, this is the application. Uh, we have again have gone to, we try to keep it as short and hopefully as sweet as possible. Uh, three pages. Got scrolling uh, form entry boxes, so you can definitely do more than three pages worth of entry. You can also add. Uh, Attachments. So if there's something that you feel can't be captured in the form itself, feel free to give us attachments. We're not looking, I mean, part of this whole idea is effective, you know, concise outreach with, with hard to reach communities and customers. And so um, the, the more effectively you can communicate in your application, it that's just reflects highly on your ability to do that with, with the public. So really try to keep things to the point and concise and, and use capture what you're going to do as, as, as accurately as you can. Going through the first uh, few boxes are simple identifying information for your organization. Please uh, provide those, those details that we need. And please do attach a copy of your IRS letter um, indicating that you, you have 501c3 status. That can just be attached as a as a PDF scan. Uh, this I discussed a little bit earlier, providing the geographic area that you will be applying in. Um, actually, let me back up just a moment here and make a point about the categories. So, um, each category that we discussed earlier, so like the council district category, at large category, underrepresented program area category, peer facilitator category. Those categories, each one of those would require a separate application. You can be awarded up to $125,000 under this program, and you can be awarded potentially multiple grants up to that amount. But each one of those categories would require a separate application. So under the council district category, we encourage you to indicate all the council districts right here that you would um, like to be considered for. And again, put as many as you want. It's, it can only help you to be considered under more council districts um, as long as you feel that something, that if you were to be awarded in one of those council districts, you would have the ability to serve that district and perform your, your scope in that district. So we definitely encourage that. Um, and then if you're if you're applying for one of the areas the at large or the underrepresented program areas, please again provide us good boundaries to work with so we understand your focus area. 
do not go outside the city for your focus. So I, I you know, brush up a little bit on the city boundaries and the council district boundaries before you submit your award. We, we need to, um, we, by way of our funding, we can only serve those areas within within the city. Of course, the Owens Valley Area Grant is, again, the exception to that. Um, you would be serving uh, Inyo and Mono counties. Uh, we're not going to be as um, kind of tight about whether or not it's, it's our customer or not up in that area that you're that you're doing outreach and education with. Um, rather, this first time out, we would like you to do general um, outreach in those areas, try to educate um, you know your, those communities about saving energy and saving water. Moving on, uh, question number five is um, again. It, 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 this relates to the criteria we discussed earlier. Describe your experience with behavior impacting programs. These do not have to be energy or water related programs, but do describe do describe the program that occurred briefly and how it impacted behavior, how it was had success. This number six is the most important part of the application. This is where you capture the, the scope of your proposal. Uh, it's really important to follow these instructions the best you can. Um, you, want to ask, you want to quantify things as often as you can. You want to answer all the questions, who, wh where, when, how, how many times. So if you're proposing certain kinds of activities, describe, briefly describe those activities, where they will occur, how many times you'll do those activities, and what your intended audience is to reach, your segment is to reach, and how many uh, people or businesses or, or other ways of characterizing that you intend to reach and impact. Uh, we'd also, um, we use these terms reached and engaged. So here we talk about estimate numbers to be reached and engaged, or engaged and or. Uh, please use those terms. Um, reach is more of a lighter touch uh, with with activities. Um, you may not get as much um, feedback in, in examples of, of reach. Um, engage is definitely more of a conversation. It doesn't have to be a verbal conversation, but it could be more of a like a survey or an interaction of some sort or a workshop or those. There's various examples um, and ways to do that on using um, different tools and, and social media. So that's, we'd like you to characterize reached and engaged as much as possible in terms of the quantity that you will reach or engage. Uh, the last uh, key box here is describe your methodology for measuring your, your either your energy and water savings or those behavior changes. If you're not able to get all the way to energy and water savings, we certainly appreciate that you're able to capture behavior change in some way through tracking. So certainly uh, we want to understand how you would like to go about doing that. And then now we get into the um, kind of the budget areas. So list your anticipated costs, uh, labor, um, identify those positions, tasks, hourly uh, rates, and overhead costs. Uh, materials, you describe as those are needed. Those could be outreach materials. Um, they might be demonstration materials as well, but you have to remember there's, a, there's limitations on how much uh, demonstration or retrofit work can be done under this uh, grant program. And then other, if you have other partners or consultants, please do indicate who they are and what portion of the budget they would receive and here and elsewhere, probably in section six, uh, what they would, what their role would be specifically. Uh, yeah, total cost normally under most of these, most of the grant categories, it will be forty-five thousand that you will be filling this in for. Um, if you are uh, proposing under the underrepresented program areas category, then you get to um, choose the amount you're applying for between $25,000 and $125,000. Again, just to emphasize, um, $125,000 is the maximum possible total award one organization can receive under this grant, and that could be from a combination of the grant categories 
category areas. So you might receive a 45,000 in one category, and you might specify something in this in this underrepresented area category. Uh, you might receive two 45s in the council district category. That's that. These are the combinations um, are are possible. And we encourage you to apply um, in multiple categories. Also, indefinitely, we encourage you to be considered in multiple council districts. And then signature, you can do the digital signature if you are able to do that, or you can sign, print the whole thing, and send us the scan PDF as well to the mailbox as instructed. Thank you for your for listening and for your patience on that. I'm going to close out a couple things here and get back to our agenda. Oops, let's see here. One moment, please. There it is. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just, I think we covered a number of these points, um, but just going to jump in and cover more of the points. Um, we emphasize it's a competitive process. Uh, maximize your chances, just talked about that. Uh, separate applications for different categories, which relates to maximizing your chances, just talked about that as well. A realistic scope of work, I didn't spend much time on this. Um, so it's competitive and you can increase your chances by proposing an aggressive scope of work with lots of activities and outreach um, per that um, the budget that is proposed. $45,000 in probably most cases. Um, however, if it's not realistic, um, there'll be all kinds of problems. So you you will, based on our past experience with grant work, we will um, make an assessment in the scoring process if this is sort of pie in the sky or realistic. Um, also, um, whenever grantees do get awards and they overshoot, there result in problems in executing the grant and if the grant doesn't go well, it really limits the chances of, of receiving future grants. Um, so it's it's really be you know I guess aggressive with your scope, but within realistic boundaries of what you you know you can do, you and your your partners as the case may be. Milestone payments um, I did discuss. I, I guess I would just throw in one last point on that. We do try to design the milestone levels. Um, to provide a little bit of relief, I guess, early on in the project. So we make the first milestone a little bit easier to achieve so you can receive the first payment so you're not hanging out there quite so long um, on the first reimbursement. Uh, availability of LADWP resources. Um, certainly, we will support the grantees in many ways uh, along, along the grant period uh, with the peer facilitator as well. So there, are, there will be some group meetings. Um, there will be uh, technical assistance provided and kind of a group online uh, forum where grantees can, can find uh, key information about the program and other resources that might, or there are various efficiency programs and other resources that might help them. Uh, and one of the resources, which right off the bat, you're, you're welcome to take a look at and do a little, or maybe a little um, scoping with, would be the um, ladwp.com slash save website. This is a good place to start to access and understand um, our various efficiency programs uh, for energy and water and which uh, segments those programs can help assist. So let me pull that up. I can find it again here. Not that one. Um, one sec. This is funny. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So this is where you go when you click when you get when you type in that flash save. Takes you to this. Um, page and so the the nice one of the nice things about this is that it organizes the information um, so if your target audience is low income renters homeowners landlords small businesses or large businesses you can click on one of these accordions and it will open up and show you 
So we'll take a couple of examples with um, low-income customers. There are certain programs that are um, free, free or low cost, um, and relatively easy to access that we that we highlight here. We also have some of the discount rate programs, um, which are a particular interest, um, especially for the underserved uh, program area grant category. And then just to give you another example, homeowners um, kind of brings up a different set of efficiency programs. And you can see all of these, both um, energy and water conservation and even the solar program is listed here. Um, while I, that's a good chance for me to mention. So these grants are focused on efficiency or conservation of energy and water. That's what your primary, uh, the primary sort of focus and thrust should be of your work that's proposed. Along the way, you can also layer on top of that or behind that um, some messages about uh, solar uh, program offerings and um, electric vehicles as well. And so we can sh we'll be probably sharing that with you moving forward. But um, it's not the focus, but it is something we know people are interested in. So we do um, have try to make that available as well under the program. Okay, so going back to the agenda. Okay, so that gets us through the some of the key points to remember. Um, I think now we're going to uh, open it up for questions. Um, I'm assuming, let's see, if the chat has been working. Have we received any questions yet? If you, on your webinar or WebEx, if you can go to chat and type in any questions you have, I'm hoping we'll see it here. One question. Okay, here we have a question. So uh, can I describe more about public serving retrofits and or demonstrations, how they can comprise up to one-third of the budget? Uh, yes. So um, again, this isn't really intended for you to retrofit your own facility. Uh, we, we're happy to connect you with other programs that can help you do that in terms of the energy and water saving retrofits. Uh, but this, this outreach program is, is all about outreach and educating people and, and changing behavior. So that will be the focus of any application you provide. The uh, one third of the budget, conceivably, you could set up some sort of demonstration uh, I think we've had examples in the past, like um, like maybe a rain garden, or if there's a if there's a public facility of some sort where you could demonstrate something to do with energy efficiency, um, or there's like maybe a workshop where there's a, or a, or a video or something where you're you're sort of sharing how to do something. That would be more along the lines of the one third up to one third of the budget that we're. Um, referring to here. So the other two thirds of your budget is really even more important to reach lots of people and businesses with the education message. Um, so that's that's why, I mean, even if you were to go a little higher or more on your budget for the demonstration or retrofit, it would just really cut into your competitiveness because you're reducing your budget to do the actual outreach and, and often would be the case. Okay. Um, any other questions? Can you hear? Just to clarify, the nonprofit applying has to focus on energy, water conservation, and doing outreach. Correct. Um, yes, that is correct. It's again is an outreach and education. These are outreach and education grants, and they all will have to focus on either energy efficiency or water conservation or both. The council districts would be um, at least half energy efficiency focused. Um, the water at-large water conservation grants would be 100% water conservation focused. Um, the 
The peer facilitator grant is a little different. So that's more helping the other grantees do what they do. But of course, that's um, you know all, all centered around energy and water conservation. And then the at-large, uh, I'm sorry, the underrepresented program area grants also um, would have to focus on some combination of energy and water conservation. Um, those would also need, need to focus on, I would say, probably both um, would be the most competitive um, application you could do for those. Hi, this is Kathy Chavez Morris. I work with water conservation, and I'm just here to um, answer any questions related to the at-large grants that we offer, the two forty-five thousand at-large grants. And I just uh, wanted to reaffirm one, one our, you know, uh, our commitment to this program. We we have seen some really fabulous grants or some projects that have been proposed in the past by some of the proposers who are listening today. And we want to um, encourage all of you to consider, you know, any one of the four opportunities that we are um, asking for outreach on, which is, you know, encourage or trying to discourage folks to pr um, from wasting water. So looking at opportunities to communicate local requirements for preventing water waste educating our residents and businesses on the benefits of water efficient devices such as low flow toilets and shower heads and you can see all of the different rebates that we offer to our customers on our website and i believe that craig has the the website listed somewhere on our the web page as well right mm -hmm. i'm sure yes um and we also are looking for projects that promote the reduction of turf through sustainable landscaping including the use of california friendly plants and native plants and rainwater capture and healthy soil development, and then lastly, providing helpful practices and habitat, uh, habits for indoor and outdoor water use that encourage or increase conservation. And specifically this year, we're looking for projects that are different than those that have been previously funded during um, previous grant cycles. So I encourage you to take a look at some of the projects that have been um, funded in the past and to think of ways that we can, uh, that you can develop projects that are different from those types of projects that have been funded previously and are creative and um, provide outreach in a way that perhaps we have not done so before. So, thank you. Okay, great. Thanks, Kathy, for that. Um, just hearing her discuss that reminded me, I think I want to speak just a little bit more about the council district categories. Um, Chris, in the, can you hear me? I, no, I'm sorry. I cannot hear you. <laughs> um, the council district category. So I think uh, part of our posting of any questions, and do continue to send questions in or email them to nonprofitgrants at ladp.com. We'll try to answer those questions and post them on the website. But in regard to the council district uh, area grants, there were certain council districts in the last round where we um, did not receive sufficient applications. And we would um, really encourage you, again, to apply in as many council districts as you can, but in particular those, if possible. So we'll post um, the information about those council districts where we're looking to receive, to be sure to receive sufficient applications this time. And um, I think it, probably goes without saying uh, your your chances are good in a district that's receiving fewer applications. So I think that covers all the agenda today. I am I seeing one more question here. One moment, please. In addition, in addition, oh, you do, OK. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a few questions coming in privately, so um, let me take a couple of the public ones here. We still have a little time, so I'll do it. Um, can the focused areas be shown by a map? Uh, yes. If you want to attach a map, that would be great. Uh, you don't have to, but that's that would be a nice thing to do. Um, in addition to energy and water, can other issues and interventions be addressed, such as asthma, mold remediation, or indoor air quality? I think um, as long as energy and water, energy and or water are your focus, the, the conservation thereof are your focus, some of related 
uh, issues or messages can be uh, layered on as well um, or attached to those messages as, as the case may be. Um, going back up to catch up on other questions I may have missed. If a $125,000 grant is requested in the underrepresented category, might you lower the award under certain circumstances? Uh, yes, in the announcement, we say uh, we reserve the right to um, potentially award different amounts or make those awards in different areas. So um, there is some chance of that. And let me have a couple other questions here. I see. So there was a question, can a council district endorse more than one proposal, and do they know that? Um, so we don't we don't seek council district endorsements per se. We don't. In, in fact, we discourage seeking of support letters from council offices. We do, however, um, involve the council office in the one category I mentioned earlier: local area needs. So after we do our initial scoring for the entire um, for the entire criteria, we do seek a little additional input from the council office on additional area needs. So um, I would say the idea of endorsing more than one, um, we don't really seek endorsements per se, but certainly council offices can say if we bring them, you know, several applications that are high scoring, they can say, oh, all of these look good to us. I mean, there's no limitation that they have to just sort of give positive input for one and not positive input for the others. Ultimately, the scoring is completed by us on our team of uh, evaluators here. Okay. I see. So another question um, that came in, if the scope is okay for both council district and underrepresented, um, can you submit the same scope for both? Well, I think I think we'd prefer, I think differentiating your scopes would make your application more competitive, so I'd recommend that. Um, each category does require its own application, that I, as I had mentioned before. Okay. Um, so each each category does require its own application, and even if you're just, I guess, almost creating a duplicate application to to, to apply in the other category, you can do that. But I'd recommend differentiating it a bit and trying to uh, strengthen it per the area that you are addressing and you know try to meet I guess the local area needs more strongly with some different uh, you know verbiage in your application. I, I think I'm just recommending that again to be most competitive. Uh, I think the last question I'm seeing here is describe more about the underrepresented area grants. Um, again, this is our first time out for these grants. It's a little more open this time. Um, as I just mentioned, there's, a, there's slight differentiations. One, of course, is the area you're specifying. Two is in the programs you are supporting, which are listed under the um, equity data metrics initiative on that page I showed you earlier. Three, uh, I would say there's also the rate assistance programs, such as the, the low-income discount program. And fourth, I would say just the um, idea of further reaching underserved communities and constituents in those areas. So it's not a tremendous distinction between the grants like in, in those same overlapping areas but there is there is some distinction and we um, think the additional grant resources are needed to adequately reach all of the underrepresented um, individuals in those areas 
And then uh, one more here. We have uh, will DWP materials slash brochures be available to grantees? Uh, yes, we the web the slash save website actually has many of those fact sheets. Um, but as we go through our um, coordination process with all the grantees, we will um, arm you with all of our information about our various efficiency programs, and we'll be here to help recommend which programs make the most sense for the audiences you're reaching out to. Uh, we'll do that in in person, and we can do it, you know, over the phone and via email. So definitely, we'll, we're here to support you in your work as a grantee and also to get our programs out there so, so more people are, are taking advantage of them. Okay, um, I think, let me scroll down here and make sure if I can get, oh, no, there's one more, okay. We're, we're here about at our hour mark. Let me see if I can um, answer one more, and we'll, then we'll call it uh, a session. So, oh, no, I'm sorry, I answered that one. I think it just came in differently. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm all caught up now. Okay, well, thanks all for your patience with the webinar. I think we had a couple of little technical issues, but um, I hope everything more or less came through loud and clear. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Gretchen Hardison and, and Kathy Chavez-Morris for all of their help with the webinar, and thank everybody for listening in. Um, we um, don't hesitate to send further questions in. We'll try to post the webinar recording and the FAQ in the next uh, few days. Might might slip into early next week. Um, and don't hesitate to reach out to us with any questions about the grant program. Don't hesitate to re further refer the, the grant information to other folks who might be interested or create uh, partnerships or collaborations on a grant project. And of course, apply in as you know, many grant categories as you feel is possible. I um, hope everyone has a wonderful day, and we hope to be in touch soon. Thank you.